All right, Shalom, Lexwell here. Let's get right into this. This uh, this should be uh, titled uh, Niger Nigger DNA linked to Irish DNA starts controversy. <laughs> uh, all right, Acts 13 and 1. Let me get that real quick. There was in a church at Antioch certain prophets and teachers such as Barnabas and Simon that was called nigger. Now they've already named Simon and they've named Barnabas and they say that they were called nigger. Okay? Nigger wasn't their name. It wasn't some last name to them. It was a racial insult. Okay, so now here we have on the screen 12 sons of Jacob are the Germanic tribes that migrated from Europe uh, to Europe from the Ptolemaic no, Egypt. Okay. So, this is why I was trying to explain the other day when the Caucasian was on the radio and said that uh, that the 12 tribes were would 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 come out of uh, of the right, white races, you know. And see, you can see this is uh, this is Templar uh, basic KKK kind of stuff, you know, the dragon, the shield, and all that stuff. Okay. Uh, here you see they they try to claim that the twelve tribes went into these places right here, uh, over over here into Europe and uh, in Ireland and all, all that stuff. As you can see, it says Anglo-Saxon and stuff like that. So what they want to do is claim the world. You know, everything spawned from the white race and all that stuff. So I just want to show you something. Let's get right to it. All right. So we go into Shem, right? And Shem, if you don't know who Shem is, you're not far enough in that Bible at all. Okay, so uh, Shem is uh, uh, the one of the three sons of Noah. Okay, uh, as we see here, uh, let's just bring up a couple of uh, things real quick. Semitic, or it says Semitic, and it should say Shemitic, is still commonly used uh, term for the Semit Semitic, and it should say Shemitic languages as a subset of the Afro-Asianic languages, denoting the common ling linguistic heritage of Arabic, Aramaic, Akkadian, Ethiopic, Hebrew, and Phoenician languages. Okay? And it, it also states that Shem is believed to be Melchizedek, the king of Salem, whom Abraham is recorded to have met after the battle of the four kings, the death of Nimrod. Okay? Now it says in a, it says in a few in a few of many okay extra biblical sources that describe him Shem is also credited with killing Nimrod son of Cush okay all right so when we scroll down here we're going to go to the Europeans we're going to go to the Germanic and we're going to go to the Hellenistic okay some believe that Shem uh, descended descend the whole of the European people. Ernest L. Martin writes, the Shemitic tribes, people who are the descendants of Shem, and including some of the peoples who came from Abraham, later colonized the whole Southern European and replaced the people of Javan and his four descendants. Javan's people were pushed mainly over to the northeastern areas, areas of Europe, uh, where in turn they migrated far east into Asia along with Gomer, the firstborn son of Japheth. I, don't, I, I believe some of this, but I don't believe all of it. And the way that he's wording it, it sounds kind of funny. Okay? I, I do believe that they colonized the area. But I don't agree with uh, uh, the idea that uh, the whole European people... And I'll get to that. I'll, I'll, I'll prove everything I'm saying. And when you do the research of Gomer, Gomer's the French. Even in, uh, the book of Jashir names the rivers that were in France that were renamed. So I don't agree with that either. Now, you have Europeans claiming to be already. Okay? Now, this goes back to this one I showed you, the 12 tribes of... Okay? Now, Germanic. Some scholars claim that the Anglo-Saxons are descendants of Shem. King uh, uh, Alfred, king of the Anglo-Saxons, was the son, descendant of Sem or Shem, church historians of England. Proponents of the theory claim that the Alfred the Great was a descendant of Shem because he was claimed to descend from Sophia, whatever that is, a marooned man who came to Britain aboard uh, on a boat after a flood. Now, truthfully, I can believe that too. 
because it's saying that the guy was on a boat he, and he ended up in Britain. He wasn't from Britain. That That's believable. Okay. Now I'm going to scroll, scroll down. Now, Hellenistic. A uh, text from the Islamic world claims that the Greeks derived from Shem. How could the Greeks derive from Shem if the Greeks are from Javan? Javan to Macedons, Macedons to Greeks. Okay? Shem, the son of, uh, son of Noah, was the father of the Arabs, the Persian, and the Greeks. Okay, I believe what the first two says, but not the, not the last. All right? Uh, to the lot of Shem fell the Orient, and his share extended lengthwise as far as India and breadthwise from east to south to Phenocoria, including Persia and Bacteria, really? I think he so many back some someplace. Uh, as well as Syria, Media, which lies between Euphrates, Babylon, <clears throat> Yeah, yeah. So now we see all these people claiming to be a Shem. All right. Now here's something that we should keep in mind right here. Racial condemnations. Okay? Some writers have associated Noah's sons with different skin colors or alleged races. For instance, Jewish text depicts God as dividing the earth among Noah's sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and attributing different skin colors to them, literally blessing them with different skin colors. Light colored skin for the Japheth, medium, dark, or brown for the Semites, and very dark or black for the Hamites. Now, based on the world you know, you see with your own eyes, does this sent does this paragraph match the world you know? Now reasonably, no matter what I say. Light color skin for Japhetites, medium dark or brown for Shemites, and very dark for Hamites. Okay. Truthfully, the world I know matches this exactly. In fact, this all this up here is all bull crap. Okay, now let's see. Let me let me show you some passage from um, Pierre Curie, our Eleanor, a writing which was composed in Israel after the Islamic conquest, is paralleled in the Aramaic text. Meaning, it all what he's what he's writing here. Uh, paralleled in the Aramaic text of approximately the same period but gives some notably different information. The Persian historian Tabarik quotes as uh, uh, Ibn Abbas is saying born to Noah were Shem whose descendants color are a black complexion with a light brownish undertone. Baya and a dark blackish brown, Ulema. Ham, whose descendants' colors are true black, <laughs> right? And a few, and a few, are a black complexion with a light brownish undertone. And the, and, you know, they gave these, they gave these names, the names for them too. And Jafet, whose descendants are very fair skinned and olive skinned. Now, that's kind of interesting, isn't it? That kind of, this paragraph kind of matches the one above it. Even though it's written by some, one's a Jew and one, one's, one's a Persian. Okay? Tabarik repeats this tradition again in the name of Ibn Abiz, quoting him again, but this time as dark, blackish brown, Udama, and a, and a few are a black complexion with a light brownish undertone for ham. So dark blackish brown Udama is used instead of true black. Udama is basically uh, described as deep surma. Ibn Mand, uh, whatever his name is, describes surma as swakwara, which is translated as blackness in the color of the earth and ranges all the way from true black. So when it keeps going, it says that uh, in his book, 
in chapter 13 of the degrees of blackness in humans if there is a slight blackness in his or her complexion he or she is as as a mar okay <laughs> if here excuse me his or her blackness is more intense with some yellow showing he or she is as ham if his or her blackness is more intense than Asmar. He or she is Adam Udama. So every time it says Udma or or yeah Udma, it's saying Adam red. If his or her blackness is more intense than that of Adam, he or she is Asham. If he or she is extremely black, he or she is Ad Lam or Dalam. Noah dividing the world among his three sons, Ham getting the land of the blacks, Shem the land of the browns, and Japhet the land of the reds. Uh, Hosea priests believe that Shem, because he and his descendants, uh, he was a descendant of the Adamic line, because Adam means red-ish in Hebrew, that Shem, too, was of a reddish race. He believed that Christ, the descendant of the line of Shem, Christ would was was of copper colored stock. Shem means dusky, Japhet means fair. Uh, in Armenian tradition, Shem had the region of Tawny. Now, let's look at uh they say about since they say basically Japhet is <laughs> uh light colored skin and Shem is dark okay so these 12 tribes of people wouldn't have been light they would have been dark brown they'd have been between Africa and between between Africa which is dark and between uh, the, the, the north which was light so here you have your proof from different areas around the world the Jewish man even says so the Persian man says so and attributing different colors to them literally blessing them with different skin light color for the Jephets medium brown uh, medium dark or brown to the Shem and very dark or black to the ham now we all know what um ham looks like right so let's just look up Jephet so let me find this real quick there it is now here is Japheth type it in it will come up scroll down it says Japheth is the father of the Japhetic race okay Ham's the father of the Hamitic race Shem is the father of the Semitic race Scroll down to in Islam. Japhet is not mentioned by name in the Quran, but is referred to indirectly in the narrative of Noah. Muslim, uh, Muslim, well, this guy, however, named all of Noah's sons, and these include Japhet. In identifying Japheth's descendants, M Muslims uh, more or less agree with the biblical tradition he is usually regarded as the ancestor of Gog and Magog tribes and at times of the Turks and Khazars. Some traditions narrated that 36 languages of the world could be traced back to Japheth. Now, <clears throat> as you scroll down, I want to show you this because this is pretty important because here's what the world isn't paying attention to Caucasian race is from Japheth Japhetic people are from Mongoloid race the Karzarians which we go over here and it says Bulan and Kagan right this is their confusion about who, which one actually is 
Bulan a, was a was a Khazarian king who led the conversion of the Kar Khazars to Judaism. His name means elk in Old Turk. In modern Turk, it means the one who finds. So there's no other translations. They're trying to express mainly this dude is a Turk. Okay? But check this out. Kagan. Kagan, Chinese, uh, uh, alternative, alternatively spelled Kagan, Khan, Zan, Zhang, Chang, was the imperial, was the title of the imperial rank in the Mongolian and Turk languages. See that? Those two are one. They are of Japheth, equal to the status of the emperor. And and someone who rules a cognate or empire. The word Kagan or Khan are distinct today throughout through histor though historically they were the same. It's the equivalent to king. Now, as you can see, it tells you the Jeff, the, excuse me, the Jephetites Here we go. Right in here. The term has been used in modern times as a designation in typical anthropology, ethnograph, and comparative linguistics in anthropology it was used in a racial sense for white people the Caucasian race period in linguistics is also used as a term for the Indo-European languages these terms are now mostly obsolete why because they're pretending to be from Shem. See, that's the whole key. They've abandoned who they are. See, they've abandoned who they were, the Mongoloids. What happens to the Mongoloids? Nobody knows. They're whites. How come every time you go to school, they go, nobody knows? What happened to the Mongoloids? Huh? What happened to Genghis Khan? Nobody knows. They're the Caucasian race. <laughs> oh boy. Now, <clears throat> this guy got mad because uh, I prove I, I I'm, I'm showing this. I'm showing you guys proof that this guy. Uh, where is it at? Yeah. That this guy, this DNA test on blacks in America, that uh, Henry Louis Gates uh, DNA te uh, blood test goes back to kings, right? So my mother was Pauline Augusta Coleman. I'm related to the Redmonds through her. Unfortunately, she passed away in 1987. So I wanted to share this revelation with my father while he was visiting my cousins. Where are you now, if you notice how light skin all of these men were, some of them actually passed for white. This man's DNA goes back to the king of Scott, uh, of, of Ireland, Neil, Neil and the hostages. What, uh, what, uh, just look into it and you'll understand. Now, who's to say Neil of the hostages wasn't this color? A person that could pass for Caucasian, but actually not being Caucasian, he would actually be of Shem stock. <laughs> Hi, Daddy. How you doing, boy? Fine, how are you? All right. What do you think of that? Were you surprised that, that white women were sleeping with black men in the 1600s? That is something. That's amazing, huh? I'm surprised you could... That, one, that it happens, and two, you could do it for any period of time and get away with it and still survive. 
just just a man and, and the black man would have been a slave <clears throat> now I want to read this to you Joshua chapter 19 and 41 the coast of their inheritance was Zora and Eshtalal and Ir Shemesh okay so the Irish name from the Bible Ir Shemesh had the name Shem in it okay when you looked at the wars of Ireland okay the Vikings attacked Ireland but aren't the Vikings today attributed with being Irish right how does the Irish attack the Irish it's, it's it doesn't make any sense so if the people in uh, uh, that were Vikings were Scandinavian or something like that and they attacked the Irish which were blacks or the African blacks that 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 were light skinned that passed for white and then took their ide identity see this is what you, you, you don't understand by the most high for the idolatry dating back to the day when the 12 tribes of Israel dwelt in the promised land and some of the Danites today still continue to practice various forms of idolatry so much so among the survivors of the tribe of Dan that obviously it ain't at least 12,000 of them who have the qualification of the Most High's word to be among the 144,000. Now many of you are aware of the secret earlier that took place out of Ethiopia in which tens of thousands of black Hebrews from Beta Israel were returned back into the promised land really through Operation Moses in 1984, Operation Sheba in 1985, and Operation Solomon in 1991. If y'all heard of these black Hebrews, and a secret earnest that took place. Put a seven up in her. Told I to tell you. These were covert operations undercover by the United States and the Israelite governments to return tens of thousands of black Hebrews who have been praying for 2,000 years to return back to the land that has been promised forever unto our ancestors. The Israelite government, consisting of those European converts, who in See right there? There's a dark-skinned man? A light skinned man, all from the same tribe. Lighter skin, lighter skin, darker skin, darker skin. 1948 via the Balfour Declaration, and have been running the Holy Land since with Israelite government declared to the world that Beta Israel was the lost tribe of Dan who settled into Ethiopia after the disbursement of the Hebrews from the land of Canaan. And under their law of return, they rescued Beta Israel from the famine and the drought and the civil war and the persecution. All this stuff happened already, right up underneath our nose. Well, we're still thinking we're black and all this stuff, all this stuff happened. Now, when you look at those people, the tribe of Dan, and you look at these people, I believe they're the same stock. 
I believe this guy is a, a Danite, descendant of a king. And that's why they arrested him, to embarrass him. This one's called the Tribe of Dan and 144,000. Just a few more points made. They were swirling around. When did the Jews turn white? Oh, I want, to, I want you to understand what's going on there. A white European convert Jew went down into Ethiopia to see these black Hebrews way back in 1867 when they heard the legend of some black Jews living down in Ethiopia the first question that the Danite elders asked this surprise visitor back in 1867 when the visitor declared that he too was a Jew, the elder asked him, when did the Jews turn white? Remember. So, so that's, that's a common thing throughout history, huh? People of the, re the, the old world always say, when did the Jews turn white? So we can see this the 12 sons of Jacob are Germanic tribes is a complete lie. It's a fabrication, right? So, look, Gamel, Abdel, Nasir. I mean, hey, if you pause it and you can see the name, all right? What's his famous quotes? See his quotes about the Jews. first thing that pops up over and over it doesn't even matter it comes up over and over again over and over again second president of Egypt Gamel Abdel Nasir quote about fake Jews currently in Israel once again proves Negroes are the real Jews you will never be able to live here in peace isn't there war in Israel right now wasn't there war leading up from after 67 haven't somebody always been like trying to kill them? You will never live here in peace because you left here black and came back white. He said that in 1952. It's 2013 and how many Negroes don't know this? How many people love staying in the dark? This is a shame. Any history book, any real history book will tell you. Shem's people are medium dark brown, medium, medium dark or brown. You got 2013, you got brown people thinking that they're, 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 they're African. Africa sold you. Type in Beta Israel, just like the man said. Scroll down. 4.3, Tribe of Dan. This is all yours to read. Somebody should give you homework.